My name is Christina Weinscher. I work as a specialist consultant at the Southern Denmark Health Innovation, part of the region of Southern Denmark. I'm here to tell you about telemedicine and e-health and its centers in Denmark. I'm sure you know Denmark, a Nordic country with a population of 5.5 million citizens. But you also know that Denmark has 406 islands and 7,314 kilometers of coastline. And the average wind speed is 7.6 meters per second, which explains why Denmark is one of the largest exporters of wind turbines. The basic principles of the Danish welfare system, often referred to as the Scandinavian West welfare model, is that all citizens have equal rights to health care and social security. Within the Danish welfare system, a number of services, including health and social care, are available to citizens free of charge. The social system acts as a safety net under the Danes from birth to death. The reasons for providing the health care do not collect taxes. Instead, the health care services are delivered from the region and financed through a block grant from the state, a state activity-related subsidy and a municipal contribution. The regions are led by the politicians elected in a regional council. The insurance companies only play a minor role in health care, as it is estimated to cover about 3% of health care in Denmark. Healthcare is provided by the region, and I work for the region of southern Denmark that, with its 1.2 million citizens, cover a fifth of the Danish population. Having given a short overview of Denmark and how healthcare is organized, I'll now go into detail as to why Denmark is considered a front runner in e health and telemedicine services. One of the first things we must remember is that in Denmark, all citizens have a unique person identifier that is listed in the CPR, Central Prison Registry. This number follows the citizens from birth to death and is one of the basic building blocks in the creation of a insurance communication and e-health services in Denmark. It can follow the patient from wherever the patient is, general practitioner, hospital, and home. In fact, today all sectors handling a citizen or a patient have some form of electronic system. This enables them to send messages and integrate the data directly into the patient record. Another very important aspect of why Denmark is so advanced is the infrastructure that we have created. By the creation of the Danish Health Data Network, the entire health sector in Denmark has the possibility of offering their services to the connected organization through one secure digital connection. The philosophy behind the health data network is that all parties in the health sector will have all their communication needs met via the same network connection. MedCom, a national project organization, is the organization behind the health data network. And because of MedCom standardized messages, electronic communication is possible. Today, more than 5 million, million messages are being sent every month. And this is in a country with 5.5 million citizens. Here you can see the development from 1993 when the first uh, monitoring began and the first uh, standards were submitted. And here today, more than 5.5. How was this implemented? How did we achieve this high number? It all began as a very local project, a very small local project in the early 1990s. When a doctor was intrigued at how supermarkets use electronic systems and barcodes in order to new order new goods, then why could he not order prescriptions the same way? This small and very local project is an example of the bottom-up approach that Denmark has used since then. Because this project paved the way for a consensus and a standard format on the electronic prescriptions, and one of the first medicine standards was created as a national consensus project. Today, the MedCom standards have paved the way for electronic and for markets in electronic communication. And today, even though we have more than 100 different IT systems in health and social care, they can all communicate and send messages to each other and integrate the data directly into the patient record or system. This 
chart illustrates and shows the types of messages and how much this has been implemented in Denmark. Today, discharge letters from the hospital to the general practitioners is 99% digital. Not necessarily that the hospital gain the benefit of sending electronically, but what they do know is that the referrals from the general practitioners to the hospital are being sent in 81% electronically. Another one is the prescriptions that are sent from the general practitioners to the pharmacy. The percentage of this is today 85% and rising. Having covered the backbone of the Danish healthcare, the health data network are now going to our growing platform. We too have the demographic challenge. We too experience a shortage of specialists. And to top it all off, here in the city of Munch, we're building a new super hospital, and when it's finished in 2020, it will have between 20 to 25 percent less beds. So how will we meet these demands of the citizens and of the patients to deliver health care with less resources and higher demands? The region of Southern Denmark has created one entrance, the Southern Denmark Health Innovation. And this unit is focused on meeting the demands by creating new innovative practices and solutions. As an example of telemedicine services is a patient briefcase. Here, with this, patients can be hospitalized in the comfort of their own home. The solution is unique in a sense that the aim is to free a hospital bed. So instead of having a patient for two weeks in a hospital, the patient can stay for just one or two days. Much to our surprise, we have discovered that it changes the relationship between the patient and the health professional. The patient is being empowered. And so far, our experiences show that it's possible to deliver the same quality of care in the patient's home as in the hospital. However, the hard clinical evidence is still missing, but we're working on it. Even though our use of e-health in Denmark is today very high, many telemedicine services are like small isolated islands. They are not implemented widely and nationally, but we're looking into changing this to national and regional strategies and action plans. So what makes the Danish successful to follow? Have an infrastructure and incentives to use it. Have the evidence and the sense to use it. I'm not yet covered the aspects of, of evidence, but my colleague, Anna Christina Dioli, will. I'm going to tell you about the MAST model, which is the model that we use for assessing telemedicine solutions before we introduce them, or as we go along a research project on which data should be collected if you want to make a full assessment of the impact of the new technology. Um, the basis of it all is that the board of directors need to make a lot of decisions as to which new technologies to take into use. And all the different departments want at the same time to choose new stuff. So how can they decide which ones to choose and which ones to let go of? The MAS model has been developed to assist the board of directors in making these decisions on, full, uh, on a full level of information. So the definition of the MAS assessment is that if your purpose is to assess telemedicine applications um, and you have to describe the effectiveness and contribution to quality of care of your new technology and you need to produce a basis for decision making, you could use the mass assessment, um, which is a multidisciplinary process that summarizes and evaluates information about the medical, social, economic and ethical issues related to the use of telemedicine in a systematic, unbiased and robust manner. And the health technology assessment approach comes in in the fact that it's multidisciplinary because of, a lot of the time what happens is that for the first patient it's very expensive to introduce this technology. For instance, the first patient who receives um, teleinterpreting. It's going to be very expensive because you need to make investments in the telecenter and the, the technology to, to talk to the patient. And then when the next patient uses it, the center is the same. You've already bought this. Um, so you only need the technology for that 
next patient. So that means that the costs are falling quite heavily for each patient. But then what happens is that at a certain point you would need to make new investments because you don't have the capacity to other patients. So you need to be very aware of these economic aspects and when you are in this curve when you when you decide to do your evaluation because it has a high impact on on the economic evaluation, which is of course a very important aspect for, for decision makers. Strengths are, however, that it's based on the requests and, and comments from the stakeholders. This is what they want before they can make a decision. It's multidisciplinary, so it, it includes everything and it's very comprehensive in, in that sense. It's based on scientific studies and criteria for quality. And it's, it's based on the UNESCO framework, which is familiar to a lot of stakeholders in the European Union and hospitals. Denmark has been identified as one of the leading European countries that have succeeded in taking these health initiatives beyond the pilot space. The best Danish cases that were identified were these governance and funding mechanisms. The availability of funding has been key to enable mainstreaming in Denmark. In addition, integrated governance models engaging all stakeholders combined with the adaptation of the legal framework have also contributed to the decisions on mainstreaming. And we have had a special focus on funding mechanisms. Business cases are one of these examples where we have shown that where the benefits are, there can be incentives. Care reorganization. Successful e-health implementation requires a reorganization of care. The already existing very good relationship between the general practitioners, hospitals, and the home care suppliers have greatly contributed to such a reorganization in Denmark, thereby making way for enhanced e-health decline. And incentives. Incentives in all pilots of care need to be aligned if e-health is to succeed. Denmark is one of these pioneers in having introduced specific rates for payment on e-health and telemedicine services. Diagnosis Relief Group, PRG, has been key in implementing telemedicine and e-health at hospitals and at the general practitioners. However, we have also seen that the ones that invest in telemedicine and e-health and services are not necessarily the one gaining the benefit. But in the overall picture, everyone gains from implementing e-health and telemedicine services. E-health deployment. High levels of e-health deployment become a major asset and enable of integrated complex solutions like e-health and care delivery, while at the same time stimulating innovation in the implementation of interoperable solutions. And the final one, evaluation, evaluation, evaluation. If telemedicine and e-health is truly successful to be deployed, evaluation is the way forward. My name is Christina Wanchi. I work at the Southern Denmark Health Innovation, and I hope this presentation gave you a good overview of how healthcare and telemedicine is in Denmark today. Should you want to hear more about innovative processes, open design thinking, this is another presentation. Thank you for your attention.